the book that absolutely fascinated me. It dealt with the, that part of her life that was baby June with her older sister, Gypsy Rose Lee. The book is called Early Havoc, and it was a big bestseller. Uh, she's had over 42 major film roles. She's an absolutely fascinating lady. Please welcome Miss June Havoc. <laughs> because so many things have happened in her life. At first, you know, the book I've always... Did they make a movie of this book? No, not yet. Maybe never will. I know where to begin with you, Dinah. Let me get this off my chest. I was going to say bosom. I know we can't, but all right. <laughs> you can't. I would like to say, I live in the country, you know, and um, I'm out a lot on the road, alone, at night. I told you once, you've forgotten. I turned on the radio in the car, and there was that silky-voiced lady. And there's no mistake in you, no oh, matter where I am. You. And it can be way out my Somebody field. was playing the records? Oh, good. Oh, all the time. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> all the time. I'll, I'll make very good friends with that disc jockey. No, I, I want to talk about you. I, the, this book, I, I've always been crazy about it. They should make a movie of it because this is the day when they are telling all. They are, you started the whole... Uh, uh, well, it's a 15-year-old book, yes. 15 years ago, it was rather um, shocking. Well, but everybody's telling everything now. The yeah. autobiographical, tremendous uh, stories about uh, revealing their own lives and yes. everybody surrounding them. Uh, this book talks about you at the age of two and that you... Uh, it took us through your early years. Uh, yes, you, very early. It, um, it went on... Of course, I didn't do a thing till I was two. I just sat around eating up the profits. That's right. And, uh, Couldn't earn a penny. Not a penny. But Baby June danced then on her Then she toes. was in the films. It reminded me, you know, Dinah being out here and doing a paper chase. That's uh, why I'm all gussied up like yes. this. Because on paper chase, I'm playing a very dowdy lady. So I thought I'd go dowdy mad lady. today. Yeah. <laughs> but when I first was in my first film, I was three years old. Mary Astor played my mother. Uh -huh. And it was on the old Hal Roach lot. And then it was B.B. Daniels and, and uh, Carol Lloyd comedies. Yeah. And then there was 20-some-odd years between films. Uh, but uh, that was it. <laughs> the 23 years. This uh, was difficult for you to write, I'm sure, because you had to dredge up a lot of memories that were painful. Married at the age of 13. That was pretty painful, yeah. Yeah. Why did you marry at the age of 13? They took that up in, in the Broadway show. Well, they Gypsy. didn't take that up. That, now, that, that, we're getting to fables. That's tech, talk fact. I was... I was at the last eight bars of quite a few mediums. I was in the last eight mm. bars of radio mm. and uh, vaudeville, which was my school and my home and my, mm -hmm. my parents, was dying. It was dead. And in order to get away and do anything with my life, mm -hmm. and at the age of 13, I was the usual 35 because I had been, been working, working ever since I was a little oh, bitty course. and I wanted very much to learn and I had never been to school a day in my life and I yeah. didn't know anything and I wanted to get out in the big world and learn how to to find a way to be yeah. somebody or yeah. something and the only way to do it was to get away from the act yeah. from which Mama. was failure from mom and, and from sister well his sister was there then she wasn't mm -hmm. there early on but she was there then and I, I there was no other way and I took a contract out on a little boy in the act and uh, <laughs> took a contract out <laughs> yes. I took one out and <laughs> said it's anyway Poor little boy but and I married him and made my escape and that was the way I was married in North Platte Nebraska where mm -hmm. you could be 12 years old without parents consent and I marched up there and I told the man in the green visor he wasn't looking and I was 12 and a half and I said I'm 23 <laughs> and he didn't even look up he just wrote it down and here's your paper and that's it you say you didn't say do you want to believe that no June are, are there many uh, misconceptions that you'd like to clear up about you well, and Gypsy and your mother not particularly like to clear up I don't um, but there are misconceptions. You said that that was a fable, that Gypsy Dinah, was a yes, fable. yes, it's true. Of course, Gypsy's a fable. It's a commercial uh, wham-dam. It's a wonderful, great, big, glossy fable. Mm -hmm. But I'm dealing in my life mostly with fact. 
when you write, and there'll be three books. And I've written a lot. I've written three plays, and I... I write. Yeah. I guess I'll I'm a writer. It's very well written. Thank you. And, uh... The second book will be... Will bring us up to... Now? Up to 27. Up to 27. Now, to now. To 27. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and, uh, then the third book, I guess, will be the hardest one of all to write. That'll be the future. Yeah. Yeah. But in dealing with from 27 to where I am now, and that was 50 years ago that I stood on my toes over there. I've been in show business over 50 years, Diana. Isn't that funny? And, well, That's a ha ha. And well, it's, it's difficult when you realize all the stages that it's been through. Yeah. It's hard to realize. Because you were laughing about um, between movies and everything. I'm at Fox now, you uh, know, again, where I did eight yeah. films. And I remember when I was kind of full of myself, <laughs> going into wardrobe one day. And you remember they used to have the dummies of your body? Yeah. My dummy said, June Havoc, bust, adequate. <laughs> will admit that in Iran, they make wine differently. They shoot the grapes. Johnny Dark will claim his real name is daytime, but the doctor delivered him during an eclipse. Jamie Farr will discuss the fact he doesn't mind wearing a dress. What's killing him are those military pantyhose. And Dottie West will find that her next hit record not only has a bullet, but a ransom note. with June Havoc, who is a very colorful lady, has uh, lived many lives, really, and is now living one that's uh, absolutely uh, formidable when you consider all of it. But before we get to the town you bought, this oh. lady bought her whole town, I, I want to talk about the fact that you, after, after you got married at the age of 13, you went into a marathon, a dance-a-thon. Well, I went into seven of them, actually. Seven. Uh, over the period of time. Why? Well, I was hungry. Yeah, good and hungry, and they fed you every 12 hours, every 12, 12 times every 24 hours. They'd wheel out this great big thing, and you'd stand up, keep your feet moving, and... Uh, Had to keep your feet moving, never could stop. Oh, no, never stop. And, oh, yes, the floor judge would be around there psh, 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 with that ruler, hurt. And yeah. you ate this god-awful food, yeah, Diana. Yeah, I bet. And, but you got very fat on it, and then... Uh, with all the moving you were doing, I oh, mean, they, well, they were never allowed to... How much rest were they allowed in the... 11 minutes out of um, an hour, to begin with, around 15, 2,000 hours. They'd reduce it, reduce it, reduce it, until finally you were out there until you fell. But the, um, the, the, the main thing, I think, about the dance marathons themselves were that they were actually a very definite um, word for the time of the world. It was, it was entertainment to watch someone more degraded than yourself. Oh. Because it was a time of degradation. I hope we're not headed toward this again. Yeah. And poverty. I mean, incredible, incredible poverty. Incredible humiliation. Poverty. Yeah. And humiliation. Mm -hmm. People could not get jobs. There simply weren't any. Yeah. There was no place to do anything like that. When you saw they shoot horses, uh, don't they? Well, what? I knew the book. But uh, they only used that as a background uh, in uh. that, uh, Dinah. And the marathon itself is a powerful and enormous, huge creature who should be out there shaking all by itself mm -hmm. and should be used as a major thing. Yeah. Every time I finished a marathon, I'd go back to New York and stand in chorus lines. You know, anything never got picked for anything. Went back in another marathon, came back with a poor little yeah. boodle I'd cry. <laughs> yeah. and they used to throw money at first. I was yeah. too proud to pick it up, but then I did. And I'd take it and go back and stand in line again. Uh, the last marathon I was in, when I knew I had to quit, I danced to... Uh, this is in that book of records. Mm -hmm. I danced to uh, 3,750 hours. It's um, 3,000. <laughs> you? Well, you That's a funny thing to applaud in a way, because I, know. I had no choice. No. <laughs> That's right. Was that one you won? Yeah, I won that. Yeah. By golly. Yeah, yeah, that, you, though, that record you had to. You have the calluses about an inch and a half on your feet. That I big. Bet. And you used to love those, rub yeah. them with olive oil and hang Take on to them. Because if your feet were numb, you felt better. Yeah. <laughs> Let me, did you, did you and, and Gypsy spend much time together as children? No. As children, we didn't. Um, Later, did you? Oh, yes. Yeah, we were best friends. Mm-hmm. That's lovely. Up until the last. Well, we discovered each other after we were grown-ups. You know, it was funny. Mother staggered out into the big world with me mm -hmm. when I was two. And uh, 
my sister had a good bunk and three squares, and mm -hmm. it was all right. She was very loved where she was. And Mother took me only because I didn't talk at two, but I stood on my toes and danced at two. So there was, that was money in the bank, and that's why she took me. And then I started to sing before I talked. I was waiting for a good part, you see. Yeah, of course. Sure. And Don't read then... anybody's lines. Read good lyrics, of course. <laughs> sure, sing it. Yeah. And uh, so then when that started to roll after the little movie thing and I could go out billed as the Hollywood baby, glorious words, mm -hmm. uh, in vaudeville, then we began to grow and grow until finally I was Baby June. Then I was Dainty June. Dainty June. And her newest boy songsters, Dainty June registered U.S. Pat Off, the darling of vaudeville. Very important. That's when my sister joined us. I see. And that's when we were not very friendly. No. Because here I, was I, you know, there are nine numbers. The soloist. Yeah. yeah. I was doing seven of the nine numbers. And uh, you knew Gypsy and loved her. Yeah. I know you yeah. knew her well. Yeah. She didn't sing or no. dance. I did a picture with Gypsy. Sure you did. And Bella the Yukon. Yeah. Neither one of us were too crazy about that picture. Oh, I thought you were both <laughs> wonderful. I loved that picture. Uh, Gypsy, it was colorful, that yeah. picture. Gypsy was an interesting woman. Uh, I feel she... The, uh, well, perhaps I'm wrong. I should ask you. Did she care what people thought about her? Because she was a very bright lady. And, and they had... There were many images of Gypsy Rose Lee. Yeah, well, you're on very tender territory, you intuitive thing, you well, it's true. Uh, I think that's part of what my new book is about. No. She built this phantasmagoria creature, mm -hmm. and it was all smiles and clowning and laughter and glamour outside and inside was very pain, hard to take. And uh, she had an ulcer inside an ulcer. She had it's incredible. Uh, things that hurt so badly. I'm talking about physical things that hurt as a result of living with somebody that she was pretending she adored. I wrote about that in the next book. Oh, I didn't know about that. But I did know that when we, when we came into makeup, I, just as you were talking, I remember one morning coming into makeup, and I, you know, I, I wake up in the morning, and I feel wonderful, and I came in a gypsy, whom I always thought was so pretty, sat in front of the mirror, and she said terrible things about herself to the mirror. And I couldn't believe it, uh, you know, that she really had mm -hmm. such contempt for herself. And she was a beautiful yeah. and a very articulate. Oh, wife. boy, was she. How Extraordinary uh, how you can have so much and so little, I suppose. How much do we actually know about Gypsy? She was on television. She wrote books. She uh, was in front of us all the time. How much do we really know about her? Do you we know think? very little. Uh, we lived together for years. I went back east after doing, what, 16 films here, and so I was, mm -hmm. and I went back to do a big musical. And at that time, she had that great big 26-room house and all by herself in it. All by herself? All by herself in it. And uh, it was during the war, and <laughs> we couldn't get any servants. We couldn't get anybody done. Well, you know what it was like during mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. And we had 26 rooms to take care of. And there was a little pond, just about the size of this, and on one ghastly hot night, we were sitting in there, nude because no one could see us, and we had iced tea and we had our feet up on the sides, and the only maid we could find at all, all dressed up, didn't do any work, but she was dressed up and she went to the door, <laughs> the doorbell was ringing, and we heard her say to the gentleman caller, I am terribly sorry, but the girls is in the bird bath. The girls is in the bird bath. <laughs> So we missed out on that fella. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Darn it. Now, you've got to tell me about the town you bought. Oh, the Cannondale Crossing. Cannondale Crossing. I and mean, this lady decided she wanted, she doesn't do anything in a small way. She decided she liked this town and she bought it. Oh, what a place. What a, oh. How did you buy it? I mean, how do you buy it? I hocked everything I owned, if that's a practical answer. Uh, this how little, many people live there? Well, nobody actually lives there, actually. Cannondale has a oh, pretty reasonable population, maybe a few hundred people, but Cannondale, which used to be the post office, uh -huh. and they took the post office away, and that was the death knell. Anyway, it's in the middle of Wilton, Connecticut. Oh, and I... it's on the Norwalk River, which is a beautiful river and pure now. And then oh, Cannondale, really? that one, <laughs> the crossing sits in the middle with a tiny little railroad. Oh, the Danbury Spur line. Uh -huh. And a tiny little... 
steeple that big. Uh -huh. And in there are all of these utterly bewitchingly beautiful, plain and stark American barn buildings. My goodness. One was a general store and a post office. Uh -huh. And another one was where they pound and grind and pull and yank, you know, that kind of thing, and then put on the train. And the next one was a big yellow barn where they had uh, tractors and things. And then they, they, before that, they had the horse and buggies and the cows. And one is the mill on the waterfall. And that's where they milled everything. And that's where I'm going to be privileged to make my home now. Yeah. In the mill on the waterfall. We have some photos here. Tell oh, us good. about them. Okay. Now let's look. Oh, that, now that is my newest acquisition. Uh, that's in the way of the bulldozers. It's, a seven, it's an 1842 uh, schoolhouse. Uh -huh. And it is being moved, oh, it's only a quarter of a mile away, onto crossing, Cannondale Crossing property. Because it's going to be demolished if I don't. I got it for a dollar. A dollar? Yep, the town had to sell That's it. That's a pretty good buy, honey. Well, it, it, I think so. <laughs> it's one In room. today's market. But by, <laughs> by the time you finish moving it, it's going to cost much more That's than that. That's what I figured. Wow. Now, now that the... was the general store and the post office. And I still have the post. It still says gasoline, 32 cents on those tanks. Oh, oh. And oh happy day. That was, that was where they yeah. uh, came and sat and, and uh, chewed tobacco. Ah, that's the yellow barn. Oh, you can't see all of it. Uh -huh. But in there are the cuddly animals uh -huh. and uh, all this, uh, every kind, conceivable kind of uh, uh, stove uh -huh. and uh, antiques, collectibles. I have a weaver, I have a potter, and I have a gourmet food shop. Uh -huh. And you can come and eat gorgeous food by the river. That's and the lovely. big trees. Oh, I love it there. <laughs> what does the village mean to you now? What does it represent to you? Oh, look. There. Oh, there's Gonzi. Yeah. Oh, I Who's have to Gonzi? tell you about Gonzi. He's my main goose. Your uh, main goose? You mean there are other goose? Oh, yes, there's a whole gaggle of geese. But uh, <laughs> Gonzi's the main guy. And when we heard now, when we heard that there was a whole bunch of beautiful African geese like that who'd been thrown, named and thrown, into the sound, we got a whole bunch of us together who care about such things, and we called it Operation Goose Lift. And we oh, went out there to the sound with all of our stuff, and we corralled these goose people. And we put them in burlap bags, which is what you're supposed to do, and you tie them uh, the neck. And Tana Sabillo, my beloved child, was sitting in the back of the station wagon, hanging on to all these geese, going and then honking. You could not hear yourself think the honking. They all want to know where they were going, of you know, course. actually. Well, and so just been lifted out of the water and put in a gunny sack. Of course. Of and by a stranger, Dinah. That's, that's right. the problem. Or the worst part. So I was stopped by a red light, and I'm waiting, and a motorcycle pulled up next to me with a man and a woman in the helmets sitting there, and they're listening to... I could see what they... <laughs> they were afraid to look at me for fear of what they might see. <laughs> and suddenly they looked over, and I felt I had to say something, so I said to them, I said, geese. And the man said, hope so. <laughs> it better be. Remember. That song, if I mean, it was written by uh, Peter Allen and Carol Bear Sayer. Isn't it? And sung oh. beautifully oh, and played you. beautifully oh, by John. John, John yes. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Yay, John. John, the show. Of it's not the same thing. It's the no. same John. <laughs> oh, that I, I, I want to talk about. It. Well, I've got Jamie Farr here and June Havoc and uh, Johnny Dark. And standing over there is a lovely lady that I haven't had a chance to talk with, but I tell you, she's from close to my hometown. Uh, her name is Dottie West, and she sings at the Grand Ole Opry or at Carnegie Hall with equal ease. Uh, one of the ones that kind of sort of worry me. Yes, of course. Thank you, Dottie. Thank you Thank so you. much. Really enjoyed it. Come I'm back so happy me. to finally meet you. I me really too. wanted to. But Menville to Winchester, I right. mean, it's a lot. Uh, had to come LA. a long ways, but it'll right. just be 40 miles apart. <laughs> Johnny, thank nice you. Give my love to everybody up there. Will you I all sure will. No problem. Oh, I love you. Three times the fun on The Odd Couple, starring Tony Randall and Jack Klugman. Don't miss all the hilarity of New York's most mismatched bachelor roommates at 6 and 7 weeknights. And at 11.30 p.m. Mondays through Thursdays, right here on 11 Alive. It's a wonderful, great, big, glossy fable. Mm -hmm. But I'm dealing in my life mostly with fact. When you write, and there'll be three books. And I've written a lot. I've written three plays, and I, I write. Yeah, I guess I'll I'm say a writer. This is very well written. Thank you. 
And uh, the second book will be, will bring us up to now? Up to 27. Up to 27. Now, to now, to 27. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and uh, then the third book, I guess, will be the hardest one of all to write. That'll be the future? Yeah. Yeah. But in dealing with from 27 to where I am now, and that was 50 years ago that I stood on my toes over there. I've been in show business over 50 years, Dinah. Isn't that funny? And, well, That's a ha ha. And well, it's, it's difficult when you realize all the stages that it's been through. Yeah. It's hard to realize. Cause you were laughing about um, between movies and everything. I'm at Fox now, you mm know, -hmm. again, where I did eight yeah. films. And I remember when I was kind of full of myself, <laughs> going into wardrobe one day. And you remember they used to have the dummies of your body? Yes. My dummy said, June Havoc, bust. Adequate. <laughs> June Havoc will admit that in Iran, they make wine differently. They shoot the grapes. Johnny Dark will claim his real name is daytime, but the doctor delivered him during an eclipse. Jamie Farr will discuss the fact he doesn't mind wearing a dress. What's killing him are those military pantyhose. And Dottie West will find that her next hit record not only has a bullet, but a ransom note. A book that absolutely fascinated me. It dealt with the, that part of her life that was Baby June with her older sister, Gypsy Rose Lee. The book is called Early Havoc, and it was a big bestseller. Uh, she's had over 42 major film roles. She's an absolutely fascinating lady. Please welcome Miss June Havoc. <laughs> because so many things have happened in her life. At first, you know, the book I've always... Did they make a movie of this book? No, not yet. Maybe never will. I know where to begin with you, Dinah. Let me get this off my chest. I was going to say bosom. I know we can't, but all right. <laughs> you can't. I would like to say, I live in the country, you know, and um, I'm out a lot on the road alone at night. I told you once, you've forgotten. I turned on the radio in the car, and there was that silky-voiced lady. And there's no mistake in you, no matter uh, where I am. You. And it can be way out my Somebody field. was playing the records? Oh, good. Oh, all the time. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> all the time. Hey. I'll, I'll make very good friends with that disc jacket. Which was my school and my home and my, mm -hmm. my parents was dying. It was dead. And in order to get away and do anything with my life and mm -hmm. at the age of 13 I was the usual 35 because I had been, been working, working ever since I was a little oh, bitty course. and I wanted very much to learn and I had never been to school a day in my life and I yeah. didn't know anything and I wanted to get out in the big world and learn how to to find a way to be yeah. somebody or yeah. something and the only way to do it was to get away from the act yeah, from Which Mama. was failure, from Mom and Mama the And from Sister. Well, Sister was there then. She wasn't mm -hmm. there early on, but she was there then. And I, I, there was no other way. And I took a contract out on a little boy in the act. And uh, <laughs> took a contract out? <laughs> yes. I took one out instead of sending Poor little boy. But and I married him and made my escape. And that was the way. I was married in North Platte, Nebraska, where mm -hmm. you could be 12 years old without parents' consent. And I marched up there and I told the man in the green visor, he wasn't looking, and I was 12 and a half, and I said, I'm 23. <laughs> and he didn't even look up, he just wrote it down, and yep. here's your paper, and that's it. You, say, you didn't even say, do you want to believe that? No. June, are, are there many uh, misconceptions that you'd like to clear up about you well, and Gypsy and your mother? Not particularly like to clear up, I don't... Um, but there are misconceptions. You said that that was a fable, that Gypsy Dinah, was a yes, fable. yes, it's true. Of course, Gypsy's a fable. It's a commercial uh, wham -dam. No, I, I want to talk about you. I, the, this book, I, I've always been crazy about it. They should make a movie of it because this is the day when they are telling all. They are, you started the whole... Uh, well, it's a 15-year-old book, yes. 15 years ago, it was rather um, shocking. Well, but everybody's telling everything now. The yeah. autobiographical, tremendous uh, stories about uh, revealing their own lives and yes. everybody surrounding them. Uh, this book talks 
about you at the age of two, and that you, uh, it took us through your early years. Up yes, to very early, it, um, it went on, of course, I didn't do a thing till I was two. I just sat around eating up the products. That's right. And, uh, <laughs> Couldn't earn a penny. Not a penny. But Baby June danced then on the Then she toes. was in the films. And it reminded me, you know, Dinah being out here and doing a paper chase. That's um, why I'm all gussied up like yes. this. Because on paper chase, I'm playing a very dowdy lady. So I thought I'd go dowdy mad today. <laughs> but when I first was in my first film, I was three years old. Mary Astor played my mother. Uh -huh. And it was on the old Hal Roach lot. And then it was B.B. Daniels and, and uh, Carol Lloyd comedies. Yeah. And then there was 20-some-odd years between films. Uh, but uh, that was it. <laughs> the 23 years. This uh, was difficult for you to write, I'm sure, because you had to dredge up a lot of memories that were painful. Married at the age of 13. That was pretty painful, yeah. Yeah. Why did you marry at the age of 13? They took that up in, in the Broadway show. Well, they Gypsy. didn't take that up. That, now, that, that, we're getting to fables. That's tech, talk fact. I was... I was at the last eight bars of quite a few mediums. I was in the last eight bars of radio mm -hmm. and uh, vaudeville. <laughs> I'm here with June Havoc, who is a very colorful lady, has uh, lived many lives, really and is now living one that's uh, absolutely uh, formidable when you consider all of it. But before we get to the town you bought, this oh. lady bought her whole town. I, I want to talk about the fact that you, after, after you got married at the age of 13, you went into a marathon, a dance-a-thon. Well, I went into seven of them, actually. Seven. Uh, over the period of time. Why? Well, I was hungry. Yeah, good and hungry, and they fed you every 12 hours, every 12, 12 times every 24 hours. They'd wheel out this great big thing, and you'd stand up, keep your feet moving, and... Uh, Had to keep your feet moving, never could stop. Oh, no, never stop. And, oh, yes, a floor judge would be around there psh, 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 with that ruler, hurt. And yeah. you ate this god-awful food, yeah, Dinah. Yeah, I bet. And, but you got very fat on it, and then... Uh, with all the moving you were doing, I oh, mean, they, well, they were never allowed to... How much rest were they allowed in the... 11 morning? minutes out of um, an hour, to begin with, around 15, 2,000 hours. They'd reduce it, reduce it, reduce it, until finally you were out there until you fell. But the, um, the, the, the main thing, I think, about the dance marathons themselves were that they were actually a very definite um, word for the time of the world. It was, it was entertainment to watch someone more degraded than yourself. Oh. Because it was a time of degradation. I 